Les quiero contar mi historia. My name is Julian Rios, Julian Rios, and I am an 18-year-old Mexican entrepreneur, which means I'm not only the youngest speaker, but one of the youngest persons in the room. That's always exciting. I'm also the founder and CEO of a company called IGEA Technologies. We are developing a wearable device for breast cancer detection. And for the next minute, I'd like to speak to you about how we started, what is exactly what we do, how we, we transitioned it from being a small startup with a very broad idea to becoming one of the leading companies in breast cancer technology, and how we see the future of not only breast cancer detection, but fighting diseases and preventing them. And I think that for understanding all of these things, it's fundamental to comprehend the inner motives of those who founded IGEA, which is the name of our company. And for me, that is a very personal story. When I was 15 years old, my mom was diagnosed by the second time with breast cancer. She took a mammogram here in Mexico, and the results were clear. No presence of malignant masses. But she knew something was wrong in her body. So six months later, she took another mammogram, this time outside the country. And the results were very different. A tumor that was so insignificant in size that even the mammogram overlooked it grew to the size of a golf ball in less than six months. A stage three breast cancer diagnosis. And despite what you might think, the main feeling or the main sentiment in my family was not pain and suffering, but treason. We felt betrayed by a system that we have trust blindly. My mom did a self-examination each week and kept very precise logs. She took a mammogram each year or each six months. She took hormonal therapy and radiotherapy after the first diagnosis. And despite that, we were fighting a stage three breast cancer, one of the most invasive, and not a stage one or zero, which were the ones we supposed to be fighting. And taking my mom's case, and putting it in the reality of our country, Mexico, is not very difficult. Instead of a mastectomy, which is taking both of the breasts off, as happened to my mom, a diagnosis like this for women in Mexico without private insurance and with low acquisitive power, it, ha it should be a death sentence. So not understanding that, I tried to research everything I could about breast cancer, the annual incidents, the methods of diagnosis, the ways of treatment. The question that I was trying to answer is that if this is the second most common cause of death among women, why are we still using fallible methods? Why is there not something better and portable and non-invasive? And that is when I stumbled upon a very interesting phenomenon called angiogenesis. And for understanding this, we need to understand cancer from a first principle level. Cancer is any disease that reproduces abnormally cells. And for that reproduction to happen, you need two things, oxygen and nutri nutrients, which are transported to the blood. This means that the presence of breast cancer is an abnormal blood flow, which means abnormal temperatures. And that's when it hit us. You could quantify changes in the blood circulation of the breasts, through a non-invasive and portable device, so you could detect breast cancer, or at least malignant masses. And this is a method that has been known for about 40 years, but it was too fallible. Temperature changes for everything, diet, lack of sleep, hormones, medicine. For a doctor, it was impossible to analyze a thermal map like this and give a result. But we knew that there was a renaissance in artificial intelligence at the time. So why not apply artificial intelligence, machine learning, which is a smart pieces of algorithms, a smart code, for making this a better method? Two years later, after I joined Ed Forces with two of the smartest guys I knew, with focus, relentless execution, and the help from more than 100 different Mexican minds, we conceive what now we call EVA, which is the first device of its kind and is completely done by Mexicans which is one of the things we're proud of, the most proud of. As I say, EVA is the first device of its kind in the world. It's equipped with hundreds of thermal sensors that go directly over the breast to analyze these abnormal patterns. After 60 to 90 minutes of weekly use, we gather all the data, we make a risk assessment, 
and tell you and your doctor if something is wrong. Reducing time diagnostic barriers, which is the key difference between life and death among patients with breast cancer. And here's another picture of it. But as we progress, we see more and more applications for our technology. For example, the same technology that we use can be applied for preventing amputations due to diabetic foot. That's a product we call Achilles, which is a small mat that you use after a shower. We quantify how blood changes in the foot and give a result. Or ADEM, which is the same technology as EVA, but instead in a bra, is in male's underwear for testicular cancer prevention. And after events like this, many people ask us, how do you produce revolutionary ideas? How do you produce truly disruptive ideas? And I think there is no answer to that question. But one of the most useful tools I have encountered in my life is to position yourself 20, 30 years in the future and ask yourself what we do today and the present that in those 25 or 30 years will look really stupid, really primitive. One of the clearest examples is that the, our whole access to the virtual world is in a device as small as this. When, artificial, sorry, when virtual reality and augmented reality permeates our world, it will be inconceivable that all our access to the virtual world was in a device like this. But the problem that I'm most interested in is in medicine. If you look at the definition of diagnosis in the dictionary, you'll find finding a disease or a pathology through symptoms. The key word there is symptoms. This means that there must be a physical manifestation in the body for us to detect the disease. And a symptom can go from a headache to a sore throat, if you had fever, for example, or a flu, or a coma, or a faint, if you had a blood clot. And in 25 to 30 years, we will look back and say, how did we fight diseases until they harmed us? How did we fight diseases until there was a physical manifestation, such as a coma or a heart attack? And that is a question that really puzzles us. And if you look at the price of, for example, EVA or Achilles or ADAM, you look that each year the cost reduces exponentially. So in 25 to 30 years, that technology is not going to be an insert that you place under the bra, like EVA, or it's not going to be a mattress or a mat that you step on. But it's going to be so inexpensive that EVA is going to be in your daily bra, and Achilles is going to be in your running, in your running shoes. So all these smart clothing, all these smart wearables are going to be gathering millions or hundreds of millions of data points that through artificial intelligence will make a prevention, not only a detection. Remember, prevention is the key for fighting diseases. There's a quote I love in the book, The King of All Maladies, which is a biography of cancer that says, breast cancer does, has a cure, does have a cure, and the name is prevention. And when we manage to accomplish that, to make a more health system, a health system focus on prevention and not only detection is going to be the point when we will, we will really democratize healthcare. So I have five more minutes left, and I'd like to speak to you about two personal stories. That is, I'd like to address the entrepreneurs in the audience, especially the young entrepreneurs. One of the main necessities an entrepreneur must have is a why in his life. And for me, I have two. One is my mom's fight with breast cancer, but also a decision my mom made almost 19 years ago. I was born through artificial insemination, a revolutionary technique in 1999 Mexico, and my mom was 40 years old. So she wanted one kid, she had no husband, so she said, I am going to have that kid. So she opted for our artificial insemination. And due to destiny, there was not one of me, but two, my twin sister and I. But here is when problems start. I was about to be born at six months. My mom had massive losses of blood and several diseases, such as preeclampsia. And the doctors gave my mom two options. He said, you either have an abortion or you die. Those are the two options. 
without hesitation, my mom said, I'm going to die. She signed the custody papers to my aunt, and she prepared to fight for battle. Thanks to the doctors in the room, thanks for, for her willingness to see us leave, my mom lived, my sister lived, and after several weeks in incubators and surgeries, it was a fact that I was going to leave. So sometimes people ask me, hey, Julian, why do you work so hard, and why do you push yourself so hard, and why do your team take these decisions? And for me, not taking things to the limit, not taking things as far as I can, is not being respectful for the life sacrifice my mom did. And what I'm trying to do with this, thank you. Thank you. What I'm trying to go with this is that entrepreneurship is really hard, trust me. <laughs> I lived through it. So you must have a very, very strong why. Because the first time life, business, the market, your competition punches you in the face, you need to stand up. And Mexico needs that the young people and the old people and every single Mexican stand up the first time they punch them in the face. That is a fact. We need that. The second story that I want to share with you is more related with what Dean Kamen spoke uh, some hours ago about FIRST. Many people don't know this, but I met my co-founders at FIRST Robotics. And I am sure that without programs like that, we will never met, and our passion for technology will not be as big as that. So first, I'd like to encourage you to support things like FIRST. Because if we make that our job, Jot, if we make that our children be passionate for science, technology, engineering, and entrepreneurship as much as we are for mundane things such as sports, then we will go towards a Mexico that we all want to see. And when we realize that that is dependent only on us, and no one will else save us, and the technology in science is really the way for moving forward is when we will, we will really do great things. Thank you very much. That's my social media. Thank you. Thank you.